Everybody claims that they have the best way to test a fan. I'm going to challenge that notion. Here is my fan testing rig. I've kind of made this myself, so maybe we'll have some revisions in the future, but I think it's going to be pretty good. Over here we have a Riven fan controller. This is, we have a couple of dials and some temperature readings. I'll be using that mostly to power the fans. It will also give us an RPM reading. Here is the fan testing box. Basically a 10 by 10 cardboard box. We have a 55 gallon trash bag attached to the top, completely sealed. Around the opening here, this is for a 120 millimeter fan. We have a couple of guidance pins, which are basically copper wire. A piece of foam, sticky back foam, that will seal the fan to the box. Inside, now this is the fancy part, Inside we have an artificial restriction. Basically this is a tapered opening. It goes back about 10, well maybe 6 inches. And cuts the flow in half. That's to simulate a radiator. Here are some of the fans we'll be testing with today. We have the Excalibur. This is a Cooler Master fan. When it was initially released this was billed as a high pressure case fan. See it's got some venting around the outside edge and it also has a um, type of bearing where we can pop the center out and clean the fans. Very nice for case fans. This is a fan that I use in the lab for liquid nitrogen cooling. It's pretty powerful I should say. It's rated at 3.48 watts. It's a YS tech. Basically loud, fast, moves a lot of air. This here is this is a crazy Delta fan that I got in a Chinbo case. As you can see, it's very powerful as well. It moves a lot of air. This is the famous Noctua NF12. This has got the airflow fins on the back. And uh, it's quite powerful. It works well on radiators and on cases, heat sinks and whatnot. We'll also be testing three new Cooler Master fans. Here's our three Cooler Master fans. We have the Master Fan Pro 120 Air Pressure Edition, the Master Fan Pro 120 Air Balance Edition, and we have the Master Fan Pro 120 Airflow. These are designed for different purposes. We have an air balance, which is kind of a balance in between air pressure and air flow. We have the air pressure version. This is for radiators in close quarters. And then we also have the airflow, which is designed for cases moving the most amount of air. The question is, what is this fan testing method going to prove? It's going to prove a couple of things. First is that by measuring how long it takes the fan to fill the bag, we can get a measure of flow. And that flow is, as we mentioned before, is going to be restricted by the artificial restriction I placed inside the box. First test, YS Tech, 120 million. 20 millimeter fan. This fan tweet or peaked at 2100 RPM. The Noctua NF12 is one of the go-to fans for everything. Ironically, this one tops out at 1400 RPM. Alright, time for the Delta fan. This one's a bit violent, so I fastened it down with two sets of rubber band straps.
Cooler Master Excalibur 120 millimeter fan. I'm really excited about this one because it was supposed to be a high pressure fan, but it's not designed as such. So let's see. Not bad. Cooler Master Air Pressure, test one. Done. This fan tops out at 1500, 1600 RPM. The new master fans come with a selector switch on the back to limit how fast the fan will spin. Out of the box, I believe it's set to the lowest setting, so I have reset this to the highest setting. Uh, much pressure in the bag. Cooler Master Air Balance, lowest setting, first test. We're done. Cooler Master Air Balance Fan with the limiter switch in performance mode. And now tops out at 2600 RPM. And inflates the bag quite well. Final fan test. This is the airflow from Cooler Master. Hmm, doesn't look good. Tops out at 1100 RPM.
Second test. All right, we're done. High speed on the high flow. This one tops out at 2,000 RPM. There are several things that you can take away from this video, and while the purpose was to focus on the three new master fans from Cooler Master, I felt that if I tested the fans this way, it would be a little bit more informative than adding ribbons to them, for instance. Plus, by filling a 40-gallon trash bag with air, we're able to measure how powerful these fans are. For instance, we had our Delta fan spinning at 3,400 RPM. It was able to fill the 40-gallon bag in 10 seconds, which allows us to calculate a gallon per second measurement of 3.94. Visually, if you saw the test, you would also notice that when the bag was completely filled, there was so much pressure inside that the box started to expand. We were able to see this also with the air pressure fan in performance mode spinning at a lower RPM. It took an extra five seconds to fill the bag, but it had a very similar pressure characteristic. Of course, every fan has a different characteristic. For instance, we had the airflow and the air balance in their silent configurations, and they weren't even able to overcome atmospheric pressure and fill the bag to the full 40 gallons. That isn't to say that these fans are bad, it's just that they were configured for silent operation and would work best as an intake or exhaust fan in your computer case. Some of the higher pressure fans that were able to fill the bag in less time will be good for tight quarter situations like against radiators or in a case that has a restriction like a fan grill. For more information on how I tested these fans and how they perform on an all-in-one water cooler, be sure to check hardwareasylum.com. The link will be in the show notes. If you happen to learn something in this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.